Is theology just for the theologians? In the Orthodox Christian tradition, theology has always been taken to be an inseparable part of the life with Christ and in Christ. The Greek word theos means God and logos means a word or knowledge or speech. So theology is not just speaking about God, it is also speaking to God. Thus, Evagrius of Pontus many centuries ago said that he who truly prays is, is a theologian, and he who is a theologian truly prays. In 1982, Pope Shenouda III Theological College opened up in Sydney and began to bring theology to the people. Today, that legacy is continued in the same institution, albeit under a new name, St. Cyril's Coptic Orthodox Theological College. And I am very pleased indeed to chat with the Dean of St. Cyril's, Father Daniel Fanous, all about it. So today uh, we're welcoming Father Daniel Fanous once again. Uh, we met him a little while ago talking about his book about Pope Carolus VI, but today we want to actually get him to put on another one of his hats, uh, of which he has many, and that is as the Dean of St. Cyril's Coptic Theological College here in Sydney. So, Abuna, you've been involved in the college for a few years now. Can I begin by asking you, what is the goal? What is the vision for St. Cyril's College? It's a great question, Abuna. Um, I think that the vision has always been what the word theology means. So the word theology just means um, what true theology is, is just encountering God, encountering God. It's a dialogue with God. It's the word about God, but it's a word that can't be separated from the encounter. And so I think St. Cyril's vision from the beginning has been that, that not only would our students encounter God, but also that our faculty encounter God and impart something of that experience, that their word about God, theology, theologos, comes from their own encounter with God. And the same thing for our students to do that in, um, in the Coptic Orthodox tradition, but also to do that in Australian context, so that whatever we are in, is happening in our encounter with God is somehow being communicated, imparted to those around us um, in our society. And I think a, a theological school has um, probably some of the greatest potential compared to some other institutions in, in our church to speak to society, to speak to society in a way that society understands, um, in, a society that, in a way that society wants to speak as well. So I think that's always been a very uh, central part of our vision. Um, imparting that encounter with God is something that you know speaks to, informs everything we do, whether that's in our worship, whether that's in the way we teach, whether that's the way we mark assignments, whether that's in the way that we um, disciple students, whatever it is. Everything is based around that encounter. And that means that, for example, one of the things I had students at the beginning in orientation is... <clears throat> please understand something very, very clearly. If you are coming to study theology so that you can argue, then you've missed the purpose of the encounter and there's no point. The way of theology is far more important and has to you know, overarch the, the content of theology because the way is an encounter with Christ. And if that way is an encounter with Christ and then I walk out and start arguing with somebody, I start telling somebody else, I start lording it over somebody, I start pointing out that the holes in somebody else's arguments, then I'm not speaking about the encounter with Christ. I'm speaking about the encounter of myself with myself or with a book, not with Christ. And so I think that needs to be something very, very clear. And that's something that we try to embed in our students as much as we can. So I'm, I'm a Christian, I read my Bible, I pray, I go to church when the government lets me and have communion. Isn't that enough of an encounter with Christ? Why do I need something extra? Why do I need to study theology? Yeah, it's a good question again. Um, I think our Lord, our Lord says it very clearly. He says, you, you know, 
What is your reading of the law? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. And I think the moment that we try to limit our love for God into either heart, mind, soul, or strength, whether just prayer, just in my, my physical capacity, in my tithing, in my, whatever possessions I have, or just in my heart, just in my feelings, or just in my mind, just intellectual capacity, I think we've lost it. There has to be love of God. There has to be um, knowledge of God and experience of God. And they go hand in hand, just as in a marriage. I need to speak to my wife. I need to get to know her. I need to know her actions. I need to know her reactions. I need to know her feelings. And then I come to know her as a person and I love her deeply as a person. Likewise with God. And so I think um, this idea that theology is just for theologians or just for priests or just for somebody else is, is quite unfair um, and unrealistic. But God really wants us to love him entirely with everything that we are. And so I think studying theology is one part of that encounter. So there's a lot of um, a lot of arguments that do go on these days, particularly on social media, uh, and often the accusation is cast about very loosely that this is not orthodox or that's not orthodox. So how do we tell what is an authentically orthodox theology? I'm not big on fighting. I'm not big on arguments and debating and that kind of thing. I think that's one of the roles, though, of, the, of theological schools across the world is to kind of bring everybody up on the same page. One of the biggest mistakes that can happen in any workplace, I mean, any environment, any institution, religious or not religious, is when you have people on different levels, you have people that have been taught different things. Whereas if you imagine, for example, anyone that is an electrician, they've all gone through the same case course, you get to the same level, you can't judge the person next to you and say, well, you've got a heretical form of doing electrics. You'll have this, you're at the same level, the same baseline. And I think the problem at the moment is that with many people um, who are on entirely different levels have never studied theology their their lives. Some people have never read the Father. Some people have never read Scripture. Some people have no appreciation of what actually happens in the liturgy. And so it's very easy then for people to argue because they're standing almost in different worlds, on different pages. And so I think one of the tasks of theology is also then to bring everybody up to speed, especially clergy, especially those in points of leadership or service, so that they understand each other. One of the other beautiful things that happens in studying theology, which also happens in studying any humanities um, or anything like that, is an appreciation of another's view. So, for example, our students will be forced to read things that may not necessarily be orthodox. In order for them to be able to critique the argument, to appreciate the argument, and to respond to the argument. But if you have, have no concept of critical thinking, you have no concept of how to accept someone's view being different than yours, then it's very hard to appreciate someone just being different. Someone may be different and still be orthodox. Someone may have a different expression. But until you're exposed to other people's thinking, it's very hard to do that. And so I think one of the tasks that we also... Um, we take very seriously a sense here, is teaching critical thinking, is teaching the capacity to appreciate somebody else's view, even though that view is different to yours. And I think that's an incredible life skill, let alone uh, a very valuable in appreciating anything in theology. Yeah, and, and of course, no one would think that just by reading a couple of chapters in a couple of medical books, they can therefore go out and practice as a doctor. And, and the same, I think, would apply to, say, understanding how the church fathers think or understanding the ins and outs of what the church says about who God is and how we relate to him. Can I ask you then on a, on a much more practical level, I wonder what, what kinds of Topics, what kinds of subjects, units can people study at St. Cyril's these days? Um, in terms of the kinds of units that we teach, um, anything you can imagine. So um, things like theology, things like early fathers, things like um, patristic understandings of scripture, which is something that's very close to my heart. Um, things like philosophy, like it's quite important for you, Abuna. Thank God for that. Um, things like um, philosophical theology, things like apologetics. Um, church history, uh, languages, so we teach Greek, Hebrew, Coptic, Syriac as well. Um, so there's many, many different avenues that people can be interested in. Um, and that goes to the same thing with maybe early church history, but there may be modern history. Um, and so then we have a number of pastoral units. 
so pastoral theology, which is one of the units that will be next semester, um, as well as units that are in preparation, things like the art of, the art of homiletics, how to give a sermon, how to give a homily. Um, and so anything that can kind of be embraced, we are, we are quite interested in teaching, um, as well as there'll be some uh, counselling units, which are soon to be developed as part of the pastoral units. So we have basically degrees that go all the way up from an undergraduate level, so an undergraduate diploma, um, to a Bachelor of Theology, um, up to a graduate certificate of arts, which or graduate certificate of theological studies, which are postgraduate diplomas, and then up to a master's level with a master of theological studies or a master of arts. And then beyond that, students can also take um, and do high degree research, whether that's a master of philosophy, whether it's a, a doctor of philosophy, PhD, or a doctor of theology or a doctor of ministry via um, the Sydney College of Divinity, um, of which St. Sewell's is, is a member college. So you can do it as a part time student, or you can do it gun ho and be a completely full time student. Some of the degrees are more structured, and so we'll ask you to do just theological or biblical studies units. Some of the degrees actually unstructured and let you do whatever you like, like a master of arts. And you can pick anything that you know you prefer. Um, and so there's actually a lot of flexibility within the degree structures for all different levels. Um, flexibility with timing um, and flexibility in what exactly you're interested in studying. Um, in terms of kind of who would be interested in studying, a lot of people think it's priests. In actual fact, the priests are our smallest, uh, audio, uh, smallest part of our student body. Um, Not in body family. size, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we still have quite a number of priests um, that are studying with us, thank God, um, who contribute you know, in their own way to the, to the life of the college. Um, but to be honest, the majority of our students are um, either are undergrads, people that are either at university and want to take a subject as an elective, which they can do with us, so for their, own, their individual degrees. Um, many of our students are people who have never studied at a university, who may have a, a TAFE qualification or have gone down a different path in business and who then want to come back to a little bit of academic theological study at an undergraduate level. We also have um, probably the larger part of our cohort are postgrads, people that are professionals in other fields. Um, so as long as you have a bachelor's in another field, whether that's uh, engineering, teaching, um, medicine, law, whatever it may be, um, you can then go almost directly into the master's program, the Master of Theological Studies or Master of Arts via the graduate certificate. And so that's a really beautiful entry point because it's only a four subject degree, the graduate certificate. Um, but once you complete the graduate certificate, you automatically have entrance into the master's and those four subjects will go across. So we actually have a lot of professionals who are just lay people. Some of them are doing it for service. Um, they may be involved heavily in, in the ministry in their own parishes. Um, uh, some of our best students, if not our best students in general, are mums. So, uh, you know, women of all ages who maybe have a bit more intellectual energy to burn while they're looking after children, or maybe just in their careers, but, you know, one is only working part-time and like to spend some time studying theology. And one of the patterns that we're seeing is that they're often our best students. Um, and I'm finding that that is probably will be the greatest reach of the college, not through priests, not through Sunday school servants, but through mums who are switched on, who have truly encountered God, who are truly able to articulate their faith in God and then to impart that onto their children. I think that that will have the greatest effect. That was possibly the starting point of the life of Pope Corvus. Um, and no doubt, you know, I think that's going to be the starting point of many, many, many young men and women over the next generations, just through their mothers. So there's a place for everyone at St. Cyril's. You remind me of something uh, Pope Shenouda often used to say. He often used to uh, point to the example of communist Russia and how the Orthodox Christian faith was preserved when the churches were closed uh, by being passed on on the knees of mothers for mm. you know eight or nine decades. So uh, mm. thankfully, well, maybe that's something to think about while I, our churches are closed at the moment. <laughs> Thank you so much, Abuna, for joining us and talking to us about St. Cyril's. And may God bless the beautiful work that the college is doing and uh, help its beautiful aroma to spread as far as possible. Thank you. If you happen to have a little bit more time on your hands these days, oh, I don't know, just for any random reason, then you might like to check out St. Cyril's website and see if there are any units that you might like to give a go. As part of the church, we are the bride of Christ. And theology, as Father Dan told us, is like a married person loving their partner, 
and wanting to know more and more about them, because, as Boromir from Lord of the Rings reminds us, one does not simply study theology. Indeed, one must also live it. See you on Friday, and God bless. Seas are my God, are countless, and exceedingly plenteous are your compassions. All the raindrops are counted by you, and the sand of the sea is before your eyes. How much more are the sins of my soul? Establish for us your peace and forgive us our sins. Disperse the enemies of the church and fortify that the sheep may not be shaken forever. Emmanuel, our God, is now in our midst with the glory of his Father and the Holy Spirit. Spirit, for you have come and saved us.